Hey there, it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy. And on today's card, or today it looks like this, I'm gonna show you how to do this shadow technique, which has been around a while. I think it's a really cool technique, but a friend of mine went to another class. She made a card that inspired me to get the Craft White ink out and try the tra um, shadow technique. And so I thought I would share it with you. We're gonna use the Forever Blossom stamp set. Now this is in the annual catalog. This stamp set's been around for a while and um, I thought it would be perfect for this technique. So I'm gonna use this great big um, blossom here. But I'm gonna show you real quick what paper we need. So I'm going to use, let me grab it here. Um, early espresso, this is just a card base, eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored it here at five and a fourth, so it's ready. I have two pieces of basic white. These are both five and a fourth by four. I have a piece of crumb cake here. This is, must be five by three and three fourths. You get my layers here, right? And then, of course, I just have a scrap of that early espresso. And we're going to start with that scrap of early espresso and some Versamark ink. Let me show you what I noticed this morning. So I've had this stamp set for quite a while. This stamp set's been around. It's a really pretty stamp set. You gotta have it, right? And I thought, well, I did this one, the Always and Forever, probably because my son's getting married pretty soon and I got a little bit of wedding bliss in my mind. But um, I thought for this card now, I'm gonna use this friend. So I opened up my stamp set and I'm like, look, there's no friend stamp there. Well, when I was putting my stamps together, I missed one. Now where my sticker is, I have no idea, but isn't that funny? I guess I've never used the little friend stamp so he doesn't have a sticker, but I just thought that was funny and I'd share that with you. But I'm gonna just take, now this is an oval, but it's just a scrap I had in my, my drawer here. And I'm gonna just take that friend. Ooh, you know what else I'm gonna do though? Because I live in Denver, Colorado and it's dry and staticky right now. So I'm gonna take a dryer sheet here and I'm gonna just rub it on my paper, try to get some of that static and that dryness off so that my embossing powder only sticks to my um, Versamark ink here. So I'm gonna ink up my little friend and it's very delicate. So when I put it down, I'm gonna set it there and just apply a little bit of pressure to the center and that's how you use those little itty bitty stamps. Now let's see if I, I think I did okay. Let's see if how it gets embossing powder. I'm gonna have to do it again because like I said, sometimes those itty bitty stamps like that and I should have, I don't think I got it flat. Let's see, nope, look, looks pretty good, right? I'm gonna heat it up and see what happens. And I should have turned my heat gun on here. But like I said, with that, this is the white embossing powder. I keep mine in a little tub like this from the basic embossing powders. They come in a three or four pack now. But let me just heat that. I think I am gonna do it one more time because I think I kind of missed the top. Although that looks pretty good. Let me do it one more time. Get that dryer sheet out again. I'm gonna do it over here. Okay, and this time I'm gonna make sure that I apply pressure right in the center. Darn little stamps. Put that like that, hold that in there. Let's see if I did better that time. Nope, I think it's gonna be about the same. So maybe I did get the top and that's just how the stamp looks. I do have a little bit of embossing powder here that I don't want. I'm gonna get that off with a paintbrush. Okay, let's try that heat gun again. All I'm doing is melting that embossing powder. I believe that the embossing powder is just shaved plastic. And then when you heat it, because it sticks to the ink, and when you heat it, it melts that plastic onto your paper. So, okay, and in fact, I like the first one, so I'm gonna keep that one instead. Let's do some embossing real quick. Or not embossing, we're gonna do some die cutting that's kind of embossing. So I have my plates here. I have a number one, which is the platform, number two, which is the plate. Number three, which is a cutting pad, I'm gonna put that crumb cake on there. And then with these are called the, what are these called? The stitch with whimsies dies. Love these things. They just put a little bit of imprint on your card. It's gonna give my flower a nice border there. I'm gonna try to get it centered up. Looks like, oh, you know what? I bet you I could do both at one time. 
Yeah, looky there. Because then with my switch <laughs> stitched so sweetly dies, I'm going to take the smallest little piece here and set that on my friend. Looks like that. And now since the sw stitched so sweetly dies, can't say that fast, has that stitching around it and so does the um, stitch whimsy die, I think they're going to coordinate really well together. So let me get this where I want it. And then I'm going to just hold it down with some washi tape. Bring in my machine. And let's run that through the die cut machine here real quick. And of course, now that I have that one, I'm going to make sure this is centered nicely. This is on there. Put that extra plate on top. And then just run that through. And I think you're really going to like the border that gives this paper. So if you have, you know, if your paper looks kind of bland and plain, you could just add this little border from these um, Stitch Whimsy dies, and it kind of builds and helps and makes it pretty. I don't know. I'm going to put my shade down. It's probably going to make a lot of noise, but get rid of that glare there. Okay. So here's, look how pretty that is with that stitching all around. And then here is my friend piece cut out there. We'll put all that away. We're all done die cutting. Let's do a little bit more stamping here on this piece. So like I said, I'm gonna stamp with some Whisper White. Now, my Whisper White ink pad is very, very old. They last forever. Nowadays, when you buy one, you get an empty or a clean stamp pad, and then you get a white refill that you have to put all over. Just be patient. I like to take a spoon, a plastic spoon, and with the back of it, kind of spread the ink around, and I think that helps it to get evenly on your ink pad, but it just takes a few minutes. You gotta take your time and really ink up, or put the ink onto the ink pad. Mine's already ready to go, so I'm gonna ink up that big image here, and I'm gonna make sure there's lots of craft white ink on there. And then I'm going to position it. I got some shreds of paper here. Okay, over here so I can see. Try not to get my head in the camera. But I think it looks good about right. We'll just put it there because that's where it went. And hold it down. And now I'm applying way too much pressure. We just want to make sure it gets a nice image on there. I'm going to put this away. And then I'm going to bring in my stampin' Stampin' Scrub, that's what it's called. So now, I've probably never showed you the Stampin' Scrub before. Look how pretty, just a little bit of white on there, that's all we want. But the Stampin' Scrub has these two sides like this. These things are the scrub part, they're removable, you can take them out and wash them. But up here in the corner, it has a little um, raindrops or like a sunshine. And you can, there are different corners or different ways. So when you put your pads back on, you know that the raindrops mean that's the part you're gonna put your mist on to get it wet. And then where the sunshine is, that's where we're gonna dry it. So I'm gonna take my stamp and really usually, in fact, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna stamp off as much ink as I can on just a scratch piece of paper and get that clean and then just scrub it right here and then dry it right here. And now we're ready for the express, early espresso that we're gonna do next. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my little friends right here. But look how nice that stamp and scrub is. Okay, so bring my cardstock back in and my ink. I'm gonna ink it up good in early espresso this time. There we go. And now I'm gonna just kind of guess about where I stamped it the first time and stamp it again with that early espresso. I'm gonna just re-ink my ink because I talked a little bit. And I might get my head in the camera because I'm trying to see about where, huh, yep, where I stamped it the first time. And I'm gonna try to get close. We need a drum roll. Let's see if I got close. That's kind of the fun of it. We'll see if I really screwed it up or if it, nope, I did okay. And now it kind of looks like it has that shadow on there. Is that not pretty? I think it's really pretty technique. It's pretty easy, it's pretty quick. Let's also stamp on that, oh, it's over here, that inside of our card. So this is the basic white. I'm gonna just stamp the words that say, you mean so much to me. I think that's perfect for a friend card. 
and I had here's my block I was like where did my block go and I'm gonna just stamp that down here in that early espresso I'm gonna practice once on that piece of scratch paper yep looks pretty good let's see if I can do it good again here on my inside basic white piece oh yeah I think I did really good and then I do have a couple flowers that are already mounted I'm gonna just take this little flower and this little leaf and just add a little bit of detail to the inside I think it's simple but that's very me I'm a very simple stamper so let's go ahead and assemble all of our pieces bring in that card base I'm gonna fold it in half on that score line Use my bone folder, get a good crisp fold here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the inside into my card. And it looks like all my are almost on empty. I'll have to refill my stampin' seals. Okay, so look how pretty that looks. Very simple, very crisp like that. Let's layer these. I'm gonna just take the same and put some um, adhesive on the back of this crumb cake. Layer that onto my other piece of basic white. Now you have to remember craft ink is, um, it's not an ink that sinks in the paper, it kind of sits on top of the paper and it has a name, but I'll be honest with you, I can never remember what it is, but it just might take a little bit of extra time to dry. So you might have to give it a few minutes to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my card and not worry about it. It also works with embossing. So if you wanted to, I could have stamped my friend in the white craft ink instead of the Versamark and put the white embossing powder on it, it would have worked just the same. Let's take this little friend here and take a dimensional or two. And then, oop, stuck to my finger. I'm gonna set that little friend, look how cute that is. I think that's crooked. <laughs> now, there, that's better. Now it's not crooked. Look how cute that card is. But one more thing we need to do to spruce it up just a little bit. I'm gonna just take my basic pearls here. I'm gonna use my take a pick tool and just slide and put the little tiny pearl on the inside of each flower here. And now my very simple shadow technique card has a little bit of wow to it. It's still easy to mail and look how pretty those are. So where'd my other one go? My original one. He's gone. I lost him in the, in the piles. Here he is. So there you go. So I hope you'll give this um, shadowing technique a try. I think it's really fun. It adds a little bit of wow to your card and um, gives them a little bit of touch. All right, I'll have the measurements on my blog, BeCreativeWithKathy.com, along with the supply list. If you ever need any um, um, Stampin' Up! products, you can shop from there at my online store. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here Friday for the final Christmas project. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.